All right, in this lesson, we're going to go over the consolidation of financial statements. In particular, we're going to talk about three things. The first thing we're going to talk about is kind of the why, why and when we consolidate financial statements. The second thing we're going to talk a little bit about is control. And the third thing we're going to talk about is the different combinations that you might see uh, when we talk about the consolidation of financial statements. So why and when? Why do we do this? When do we do this? Well, kind of to put them together, we do this because the acquirer, and I've been using investor, but the investor, the acquirer, obtains a significant control rather than influence. So in previous lessons, we talked about equity method of accounting, and we use equity method accounting when an organization invests about 20 to about 50% um, in another corporation, and in return, they get uh, 20 to 50% of the voting rights. Now, uh, we know that in order to have control over something, we've got to have a little bit more than 50%. We really need 50% plus one. So when we have the, the, between 20 and 50%, uh, we have influence. We can influence what goes on, but we can't merely control it. An example that I would use is that, let's say I want the corporation to go one way and everybody else, everybody else wants to go the other way and I only have 50% of the outstanding shares, no matter what happens, we're gonna be in a tie battle because I might wanna go this way, I'll vote 50 shares out that way, but then everybody else who has the other 50 shares will vote the other way, so now we're at a deadlock, okay? It gets even worse when I have, let's say, 40 and there's 60. I'll put 40 shares up going this way, they'll put 60 shares going up that way, and they're gonna win because they got more shares against me. Okay, so but I do have influence because I have a lot of shares and those shares may turn out to give me maybe positions on the board, uh, seats on the board that I can fill with people that um, think like me. Okay, so significant influence is I can influence but I can't control it. Now control says that I have 50% plus one which means if we want to go this way, we can go this way because I've got all I've got the majority of the share. And because I have the majority of the shares, it doesn't matter what anybody else wants to do. We're still going to go this way no matter if they put all of their shares going um, in one direction and I go the other direction. Because I have, let's say, 51 shares to their 49, um, I win. Okay, so that's one, that's control. Uh, FASB explains control by uh, giving this definition of the direct or indirect ability to determine the direction of management and its policies through ownership, contract, or otherwise. Uh, otherwise is kind of any other complex agreement that we might come to uh, that allows us to have maybe have more ownership than, uh, from a voting rights standpoint, more ownership than someone else. We're seeing that a lot today, um, typically because of venture capitalism, uh, where owners of these organizations or founders of these organizations don't want to give control out, but they need to bring in capital. And so they structure their, uh, their, their agreements to keep them in control of the organization um, and then still give a percentage of the profits or the losses out to their investors. Um, these are the complex other, otherwise uh, agreements that might occur. Okay, so FASB says because we have direct ownership, we need to consolidate. Uh, we can see that in FASB ASC 810-10-10-1. It states that consolidated financial statements are usually necessary for fair presentation. So in order to fairly present what's going on as a whole between both organizations, we must consolidate them rather than keep them separate. Um, if one of the entities in the consolidated group either directly or indirectly has a controlling financial interest in the other entities. So because we have control, uh, we need to consolidate. Now there are some arguments on why we do this. We do this because a combined financial statement is typically more meaningful than separate ones. An example that I can give you is, let's say the company that I'm investing in sells this widget for ninety for a dollar. and that's the minimum that they'll go, $1. If you're gonna buy from them, you're gonna pay $1. However, because I'm gonna invest 50% plus one in that, I, as the controller, tells them, hey, you're gonna sell it to me at 90 cents. You're gonna sell it everybody else to a dollar, but for me, 90 cents. 
Well, that isn't necessarily fair because we're getting some kickbacks here. I'm getting it for 10 cents less than someone else is getting it. So what we really need to do is combine our financial statements, eliminate that 10 cents, and now we have complete financial statements. It kind of gives us what's going on as a whole rather than as individuals. And so um, even if both companies keep separate books, we consolidate. And we're going to see that we're going to have opportunities where I'm only going to own 50% plus one, which also means we're not one corporation together. And because we're not one corporation together, they're going to need to keep their financial statements separate from mine. They're going to need to keep their books different from mine. And so all we're doing at the end of the year is we're combining our books, we're doing consolidation of the financials so that when we report our financials, we're going to report them as one rather than separate. So we may have separate books, uh, but at the end of the day, we're going to consolidate. So when control is obtained, then a business combination has a, is existing. Okay. Now, business combination does not mean that I am combining all of our assets, all of our liabilities, and everything together. It really just means, do I have control? Yes, okay, then we technically have a business combination. When a business combination is established, then we prepare consolidated financial statements at the end of each year. We do that based on the acquisition method, which we'll talk about in other lessons. Now, before we leave this topic on consolidations and why and what control is, let's kind of give you an overview of five types of combinations that you're going to see. Now, before I go through these five here, let's talk about what statutory means. Statutory means that when a business comp uh, combination occurs, one of the organizations are going to dissolve in some way, or at least one. So statutory means that when the combination occurs, one or more of the organizations involved is going to dissolve. Okay, so that's all that it really means. So the first one that we're gonna look at is the statutory merger, the statutory merger with a buyout of assets. So what does this look like? So we've got company A and we've got company B. Company A wants to acquire all the assets of company B. So what do they do is they go over to company B and they say, we wanna buy all of your assets and basically everything that you have. We don't want your corporation, but we want to buy everything that you have, which basically means your corporation doesn't have intrinsic value. It doesn't have any value to us. Um, let's say a brand name, for instance. The brand name doesn't mean anything for us. We just want the assets that you have. So what company A does is they buy all of the assets. The corporation is still over here. In return, really, the corporation gets cash from this corporation A, and then it dissolves, okay? So really, once I, company A buys all of their assets, they've got nothing, so then they dissolve, okay? So that's a statutory merger in which uh, company A just buys out all their assets and they're left with no assets and therefore they dissolve at the end of this combination. The second type of combination that we're going to see is the statutory merger. Um, the statutory merger is occurring because of purchase shares. So let's go back to our A and B. A wants ownership of B, so what do they do is they buy out all of the outstanding shares or all of the shares of company B. So once they've acquired all the shares, it's as if they owned company B because they've owned 100% of the shares. Uh, typically what happens is uh, all their assets will then go to company A and then company B dissolves because it's not needed anymore. Okay. Um, the third one is the statutory consolidation. Statutory consolidation works like this. Company A, company B. Company A decides to buy company B. Um, and company A and B dissolves and forms a new corporation, corporation C. Okay, so statutory combination, just, we're just saying is company A, B dissolves and they form a new corporation, company C. The fourth one is the acquisition of 50% plus one. That's kind of self-explanatory. We're still going to have company A and company B, but I'm going to acquire 50% plus one of company B. Therefore, I have control, but we're still going to have two separate corporations. Okay. Reasons why we might do that. We might do that because company B might have a good intrinsic value. Uh, people know its brand, so we don't want to dissolve the brand because if we do, we kind of lose the value in company B. So we're just going to acquire 50% plus one. Once we've done that, uh, we let them continue to run as if they were running because the brand um, is so important to that company. Okay. 
And then the last one, we're not going to talk a lot about here, but it's the VIEs, the variable interest equity. Again, we won't talk much about this one, but uh, variable interest entities typically uh, are done because of contracts. So company A and company B, maybe company B, a has a contract to manage company B. Um, there may or may not be any direct ownership, uh, but not necessarily 50% plus one or some of these other types. So uh, these are very different. We'll talk about those in a different lesson, but those are your five types of combinations. So in this lesson, we've talked about an overview of a consolidation of financial statements. We also talked about control. And then we talked, our third thing that we talked about were the five types of combinations that you're going to see.